Did you ever think about the foil uh, in which you receive your food when you order from a food delivery app? Or have you gone to your first aid box to have a closer look at the packaging of the colorful medicines? Chances are you haven't. But can you imagine a life without it? A life without aluminium in it? To understand how a smelting factory works and to have a closer look at how our silent friend aluminium is made, we decided to visit one of its factories run by ABG at Odisha. Engineering has always been a profession that has been dominated by men and uh, when it comes to plants, uh, when it comes to places like this where we are standing right now, you see mostly men roaming around. But that norm is changing and I have with me someone who is one of the agents of this change. I have with me Madhushmita Sahu. Madhushmita is the pot room senior manager here. Uh, Madhushmita has been kind enough to tell us about her own journey and how she started as an engineer. Madhushmita, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, thank you, Paul, for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Madhushmita, can you help me understand where are we exactly standing? What, what exactly happened? So this is the place uh, where we receive our raw material, alumina, from our sister concern, Utkal. Uh, so alumina is uh, carried through uh, BTAP racks and uh, we receive the alumina in bags here. Right. Then this is being uh, conveyed to the alumina silos. Aditya Birla Group is the second largest aluminium producer in India and India is the second largest producer of aluminium in the entire world, only next to China. Of the 4 million metric ton of aluminium produced in the country, 1.3 million metric ton comes from ABG. Madhushmita, help me understand this. You know, you know, first time when you take up that plunge as an engineer, you want to be an engineer, and uh, you see that a lot, not a lot of uh, women in your batch are taking it up. But then you decide that you know you want to do it. What was that decision like? Uh, were there people in your uh, you know home who were concerned that whether to should you should take the engineering or not? How was that like? Early in my school days, uh, I was uh, quite clear on my uh, career choices, right? So, uh, I had two choices. I was quite active on sports, so I had two choices. Either to become an engineer or to become a coach. Right. I was uh, quite uh, determined uh, to take up any physical challenge uh, in choosing the hardcore engineering sector. Let, let's talk about, uh, you know, the first role that you took up uh, immediately after engineering. Uh, GET is the program that you were uh, enrolled in, right? If yeah. I'm not wrong. So tell me a little bit about that program. How was that experience like and what was the first working experience for you after college? So knowing the fact uh, that I'm the first uh, female GET, it was a matter of uh, pride and excitement. Uh, when I joined, uh, initially uh, staring looks followed everywhere. But uh, slowly I started uh, mixing up with people and uh, people started accepting me right. as a part of them. Right. I remember uh, way back in uh, 1997, uh, when I joined, the day I joined, uh, the female washroom was inaugurated uh, in the plant. Right. So, uh, that gave me a feel of uh, belongingness mm -hmm. and uh, made me felt like a part of the family. Some time now, you mentioned that the aluminium actually comes from uh, Utkal Cure. Yeah. What exactly happens after this? If you can uh, help us understand, and if you can, you know, take us around uh, through this plant, it will be great experience for us as well to, you know, explore. This. The overall aluminium manufacturing looks something like this. The bauxite is mined first. It is then processed to produce alumina. The alumina is then transferred through vehicles to the factory. It is in this factory that the alumina is electrolytically reduced to aluminium and then is cast into multiple products. Which now Madhushmita will talk about a little more. It's like a huge place that you have uh, you know, brought me in uh, from the place that we were in. So what exactly is this place and uh, what exactly happens at this stage? It's like alumina. Carbon is another raw material for making of aluminium. So for uh, making the anodes, we have uh, this carbon plant. And carbon plant has got three auxiliary process in place. First is the green anode plant, where we mix the coke and peach to make the green anode paste and uh, green anodes. Then it is uh, goes to the anode baking furnace for baking it in the right temperature. Right. Then we are adding the stain or casting the stain to the anode block. 
make the final product or final rotted anode for the aluminium product process. That is being used in the pot. Right, lovely. Uh, you know, it goes through a lot of processes, it goes through a complete journey and you know, you also have gone through a journey of this sort. Uh, in, in 2006, I think, uh, you, you got the first supervisory role, right? And, and it's quite unheard of, uh, you know, a woman coming into a plant and then, you know, supervising. There's so many men on the shop floor, on the work floor. So, how was that experience like? When did that happen and when that happened, what was your experience for that? I always believed uh, that knowledge is your power and uh, the ability to deliver is your power. Right. People should uh, listen to you uh, because uh, not for your high pitched voice right. but because you are talking something on the subject and something sense. So I always uh, learned through the power plant uh, process. So within uh, six years I became the head of CNDI department. Then I got an exposure to working brownfield expansion project. I developed a team of young GTs and DTs okay. to take up the challenging role and stabilize the new units for okay. operational and maintenance process. So I became the first uh, CNDI engineer to uh, head the CNDI department. Uh, handling of uh, 24 volt DC to uh, work in 220 kV transmission line, uh, it was a nightmare. But uh, yes, with the inclusive culture and people connect, I could handle it smoothly. I changed my location and uh, to Aditya, uh, take over as Aditya Carbon e and I had. For my contribution to carbon plant, I was offered a more diverse and challenging room to head as pot room. Madhushmita, we are standing in front of these huge machines and these are the machines who are responsible for the finished good, for the finished product. But I'm sure there are other processes also in place uh, that you can, uh, you know, take me and uh, we can go and roam around. And you were mentioning that you are now uh, heading the pot room operations. So we are going to go to your division. We are going to see what happens there. So if you can take me around there and, and we can explore that. Yeah, let's. So, so let's go. Yeah. If you have to, you know, define the women of ABG, what would that be for you, you know? Uh, and, and for the years that you have spent here, what have you made sure that happens, which, which tells you that, you know, gender doesn't matter at ABG? Committed, confident and courageous to take risks define so many in ABG. In 2006, uh, I took the initiative in establishing the first woman in LMS category, paving our way uh, many women came forward to take up uh, various roles in maintenance and operation, coming in shifts and working in soft floor. So that uh, helped to create a gender neutral work culture in the soft floor. Currently in port room, uh, few women GTs are getting trained to take up a uh, higher supervisory role in uh, next two to, two to three years. So I'm making uh, myself uh, visible and approachable in the soft floor to connect with the team, creating the positive vibes by motivating and appreciating the team members and trying to create an uh, inclusive work culture by valuing individual opinion. So from this, uh, you know, we will go towards the last section, which is the cast section, as you mentioned, where the finished goods are ready and then it's taken to the dock where we started. So we are standing at a place which seems like the last leg of the entire process here. What is this place? What exactly happens here? So hot metal from the pot room is being transported uh, through ladles and uh, through metal transfer vehicles. Then it reaches here as you are seeing on our back, you know, uh, these ladles are being transported from the pot room to here. Then through CSTA, this uh, uh, crane, uh, through this uh, crane, it is being poured into the furnace. Right, to maintain the temperature and after that uh, we have two processes like uh, ingot casting machine and the saw casting machine. So hot metal is poured in the process to get final product of ingot and uh, saw cast and PFA. The primary aluminium received is then further turned into flat roll products, extrusions and cables which are then used to make the foil or the medicine packages that we mentioned earlier to you. Okay, uh, this brings me to the end of this particular uh, video, Mandushmita. You know, 
a lot of young women they must be are watching you right now what would be your advice to them who are you know at your shoes maybe a little doubtful about the career choices that they want to take up in life so in this process it is utmost important to believe in yourself stick to your priorities and never compromise on yourself i believe that uh, being confident in myself and my ability is the utmost reason for me being reaching at this stage of my career superb thank you very much manushmita for you know giving us time for showing us around this beautiful uh, plant it's very rare that you get an opportunity to get inside a plant and see how things roll we always yeah. see the finished food and finished product and don't see the kind of work that goes behind it similarly from your journey also a lot of uh, you know aspiring students will definitely get some inspiration and on this note uh, we will end this particular video do tell us in the comment section how you like the video and what you guys want us to improve on uh, if you are want to ask some questions to madhushmita please do that in the comment section as well and we will forward that to madhushmita for answering that thank you once again madhushmita it has been a pleasure talking to you thank you thank, thank you so much